Okay. Uh, is there anything that you don't want me to say? Do you not want me to bring up your guys's like, uh, you know, weird sex trafficking shit? No, you can bring that up. I think it's important. Yeah, that's uh, old news at this point. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the listeners accept us for you know who we are. So I, I, I right. appreciate weird it. sex traffickers. Yeah, it's like weird Twitter. <laughs> 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 Is that a painted picture of Oprah? No, or is that... is, so I used to work at Starbucks and uh, Oprah came out with her own like signature line of chai tea. And so one of these was in every Starbucks store like across the country for like a year or two. And I just like took it home one day. Every sentence out of everything <laughs> you spoke exponentially got worse and worse. Yeah, it doesn't get better. <laughs> podcast where every week we police the mean streets of the internet because hey somebody's got to do it and then we let you be the judge the jury and the executioner in the court of public opinion coming to you live from neo chicago i'm officer kevin i'm officer grant I was like, we know we're sitting here on video again so anyone who donates on patreon can yeah. see our uh, faces here in this uh apartment we record in and i'm just like you're sitting there with the theme song playing on your phone and i'm just like yeah. watching a video of like me and you just like sitting there yeah with the, flo- the phone light on your face and it's just like it's I'm so like, exciting i'm like this is what this looks like this is the future man i'm like this is what we've been doing for over four years like how pathetic well with the concept in mind of i'm focused i'm honed in i'm like a samurai warrior i got my blade right here aka my cell phone and it's just, it's sharped, it's honed, it's ready to chop down bamboo in the forest, and I'm just sitting there waiting, anticipating. Like, the thing that, that you see in samurai movies is that they always stand there and they don't open up, they don't pop the blade until it's absolutely necessary. They just stand there and they wait. I like when they just go like, they she that and unsheathe that really quick right. you don't even see the blade. Exactly. That's like you, you yeah. like, you don't even unlock your phone. You just like, right. click, click, and like, someone just can't exactly. cancel See, that's that's the uh the 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 fingerprint button that i used to unlock right there check that out just like that he's moving so fast i didn't even see it huh <laughs> we're also joined by oprah here in the studio so if you're watching yeah. you can see uh we have um we're, this episode sponsored uh in part by uh viewers like you the oprah foundation harpo studios we're we're filming in the old harpo studios here Hey, it might as well be. I mean, I'm only a couple blocks away from where it used to be, and really? they and they knocked it down. So oh, that is fucked this up. is the new Harpo, the new Harpo. I mean, someone's got to take up the uh, the title, and I think it should be us. I think I yeah, think we, so. we are yeah. Hashtag Thought Cops for Harpo. So Harpo is Oprah backwards. Now we just have to call it whatever Thought Cops is backwards. Uh, Spock, salt. <laughs> yeah, sure. Anywho, enough uh, jibber jabber. We've done enough gibbering and jabbering for one episode, I think. Yeah. Uh, on, to, on to the real important information. Uh, let's give a quick thank you to our guest from last week, Bruce Kesselring. <laughs> and let's give a warm welcome to a returning champion to the show. Folks, would you believe it? We have the one, the only, Donovan Castillo, a.k.a. Crip Daddy, a.k.a. Young Crip. How are you, Donovan? Hello, boys. Welcome to your own show. I'm welcoming you. <laughs> Thank you. I feel Thank very Thank you for welcome. having us. Yeah. Yeah, you're nice. welcome. I yeah. feel cozy. I like this. <laughs> Donovan, we're, we're glad to have you back on the show, man. Um, I, uh, I was thinking about the last time you were on the show because it was not long 
before quarantine because uh you're not you're not too terribly far from us i believe you're what in rockford illinois yeah yeah you guys and, are just a stone throw away right right and you were supposed to be coming to uh you're supposed to be coming from neo rockford over to neo chicago and yeah. doing a, a stand-up show and we we were going to go yeah, see you was um, right before everything it like, was yeah like before, uh yeah. like Zwick was coming down we we're all going to go you know see the show and everything and then you were like at the last minute your doctor was like hey there may or may not be this uh highly dangerous virus going around um you know maybe like it's better if you don't go and i was like oh man that sucks he can't go he can't even go to a bar or like a restaurant and then the whole world shut down a week later i was yeah, like dude. damn dude, I, and i was like in that moment, it felt very like, ah, oh, fuck, man. Is my doctor, what, what does he know, right? Like, right, oh, this guy. right. I almost didn't listen to him, but like, even before he said something, I had been keeping tabs on like weird shit happening in China. Cause me and my friends are like, we love weird, like dumb conspiracy shit. And we had like a group chat and somebody posted like uh, a tweet like this video of China building like an entire hospital in less than like, what was it? Three days or something. Yeah. Shit? Yeah. And we were like, that's fucking weird. That's really <laughs> weird. Right. We had these bricks sitting around ready. No, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, it, I don't claim to know if that's the case or not, but I, I was <laughs> thinking too, like we were also talking on that episode. I believe that was around the time when the first documented cases of COVID-19 were happening. Yeah, yeah. Because we had a story where somebody was on the news and they were coughing and we're like, do they have fucking coronavirus? Remember when it was a joke? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's like, dress your avatar on Twitter up in a yellow hazmat suit. And then it's like, oh, yeah. yeah." Now it's just everything sucks. And then then everybody's grandparents started dying. (laughs) Oh, I guess. (laughs) I guess it's serious now. Yeah. Man. Feels it feels like so long ago, but also not that long ago because again, that was towards the beginning of 2020. It's um, the accordion mm-hmm. effect. I'm telling you, you know. But like I said last week, I'm hoping for a return to live comedy soon because, like, I've got my first vaccine. Grant, you got yours coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm getting chipped tomorrow. Wow, it's exciting. Donovan, Ooh, are, are you are you, uh, are you getting chipped? Yeah, I'm getting my Fauci algae uh, on <laughs> Sunday, I believe. <laughs> Sunday or Monday. Nice. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I uh the if, like what's the worst case scenario for me, right? Like I, I feel like it could only improve my situation. I mean, I think that's the case for a lot of us. I'm like, I mean, what the I fuck? I think like most people. What else am I doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah, Fucking, yeah. Give me the you know, I'm at first I was like, Well, yeah, I don't know. This kind of, you know, who's to say what's in this stuff? And then all of a sudden it was like I don't oh, want to yeah. stay home anymore. I've gotten vaccinated so many times. You think a vaccine's going to take me out? I'll punch that vaccine straight in the vaccine dick. I don't That's care. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. You know, but that being said, Donovan, it hasn't stopped you. The momentum hasn't uh, kept you down because you have uh, started your own podcast in the last uh, year, I believe, was it? The, uh, was it the, the Crip in the Cradle? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. If you want to talk a little bit about that, I know it's on, you got a YouTube channel, um, mm-hmm. throwing them up on there. Yeah, I, uh, I, I pretty much just took the initiative to record conversations with me and my mom, who I love to just berate and uh-huh. belittle at any chance I get. And, uh, and I like to post that online. It, it's, a, it's a real bonding thing for me and my mom. I know. I was going to say that's like a big reason I would say that you kind of started to blow up on Twitter because it was you put up these um, I, I would call them like kind of a slow burn uh, comedic videos on Twitter where you start telling these uh, stories or anecdotes. And uh, yeah. I feel like, like a, a good a good chunk of them, uh, if not at least half of them, are just to get a reaction out of your mom who may or may not like be listening in the other room. And it, it's just uh, it's a lot right, of fun. Right, so, yeah. you know, if yeah. I, you know, happy to hear there's a lot more of that going on. And, um, you know, you're staying busy as well. Uh, I know, like you said, um, you know, you want to you want to be back out doing stand up comedy in some extent. And you also have a um, a GoFundMe uh, where you're, you're trying to get a bus to go on tour, like an actual uh quote unquote short bus i believe yeah yeah dude i'm trying to get me uh one of those sweet fucking special ed buses uh which are (laughs) surprisingly like not as expensive as you would think really like yeah they they range from just like 
anywhere from seven to ten thousand, which realistically not that bad. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, and this is like not even to rent it, just to outright buy it. Yeah, just to outright get one. And, and that's going to be, I mean, God, that's going to be a ton of fun if you can like get that off, go get that, you know, I would like fucking come to Neo Chicago, that bus pulls up, you know, we're having, you know, we're having a hoot and a holler. Yeah, it's yeah. like those like Grateful Dead buses. Yeah, except yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Except for, you know, the special ed students. And that's what I kind of wanted to, to do with it is uh, I wanted to bring back like, traveling like side shows but with comedy and just show up in random places in like abandoned parking lots and see if i can gather a bunch of people to tell shit and fart jokes you know i'm absolutely sure you could oh yeah easily i, I mean will hey you come here we'll fucking do it yeah that's what i'm saying like I, I, and it's a it's a good excuse to like just travel after being kept inside for so long oh, yeah. and linking up with other people you know what i mean like yeah, and, it's a good thing. And I do think there's like going to be like a frothing demand for that because it's like, you know, people are oh, starting yeah, to get out sure. and about and everything. And things are starting to, like I said, we're, we're, we're getting our chips implanted and everything. And people are going to be like, hey, if there's shows happening, if there's people in abandoned parking lots telling shit and fart jokes, I'm going to be there because right. I, have, I haven't listened to a shit or fart joke in person in God knows how long. Where do I go? Yeah, I'm not making them. I'm just sitting here stone faced. Yeah, and my dog, he's really loving the <laughs> idea too. And you can right, right. Yeah. Hey, bring him along, you know? Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody's invited. Everybody will be involved. Everybody's dog, everybody's person. Uh, no women allowed, though. That's gross. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> Guys only. Bit of a, uh, bit of a boys club, let's say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, it, it just felt like it should go without being said, but. Just right, exactly. Right, and I do appreciate you clarifying that, Donovan. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of offensive jokes, I always think that that's like one of the funniest aspects of your, uh, of like your your Twitter and like your just overall branding is that you'll you'll, you'll throw something out there that'll be so like so obvious and people will take the bait and you'll like give them an out and they won't take the out and it's it's created such fascinating insights into i feel like how a lot of people think nowadays which is just like you know like using your own like disability sort of against you to like create their own sort of hateful thing and you sort of step back and just go hey i was joking now you're disparaging me you know yeah it's always yeah. mm -hmm. crazy to see some of those interactions i just like scroll through and read all of them anytime i see them pop up on my timeline <laughs> yeah no those are it's, some of my favorite ones no i do get a kick out of it because it's like yeah i mean you you just get the right person you hit him in the right spot and it's just like hey you look like an asshole now so yeah like i i don't know man the the world takes itself way too serious and mm -hmm. people live on twitter where like their entire lives extend from it so like yes any sort of thing that breaks their little bubble is just like earth shattering to them and i find that very funny but and i know that's like true because it's even gotten a lot worse in the last year since we've all been like cooped up and that's something yeah. we've noticed like doing the show every oh, week yeah absolutely is you know like grant's gone on record and saying we've we, we've you do the show you do thought cops long enough you can kind of see the puppet strings the matrix coding the green numbers and letters flying around and oh, then yeah. you start to see like the cycles going like faster and faster and faster because it's like we are stuck. They're, like our worlds are like for more, uh, more or less of a better term, like all like kept you in that bubble on Twitter because we that is our social life now. That is our brand. That's our extent of like how we express ourselves. Yeah. And it's not good. It's not good. No, it's completely sad and asinine. And I, I, it, it's hypocritical of me to, do to say that to a degree but i am at least thankful to be a uh, level of self-aware to yes. know that when i'm in that way i can just call myself gay and then you know move on from my day right and that's that's sort of what i'm getting at with like i feel like you give so many people like a more than generous out to just be like let me take a step back and they never people never do they never, never do. take a step back it's hilarious. Like, I feel like I saw a conversation you were having with someone a while ago about uh, about the short bus um, GoFundMe 
Yeah. And some yeah. someone was like, "Well, I'm what I, like I grew up having to take this," and you're like, "Hi, I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> I also like I'm trying to reappropriate this. I'm trying to make light of it. I'm trying to create some form of comedic value that like hopefully shines some sort of positivity on the world." And these people, they just like double down, just like, no, it's not acceptable. It's just like, man, co- come on, God. take a step back. That just reminds me of like, I knew somebody who uh, did a, who had like a stand up joke about how she walked in on her brother who killed himself. Like he hung himself. Right. And after the show, uh, so, you know, someone's like, you can't tell jokes like that. And she's like, it happened to me. <laughs> like if yeah. anyone can, yeah. I can, you know? Right. Yeah, right. dude. That that's my favorite thing. I it's just it's a guilty pleasure that I don't know if I should enjoy as much as I do. But I I love when I get the reaction of don't joke about that. That's not funny. Only because like I never set out to get that reaction, even though some people might think I do. I never do. It's never the intent. But when it does happen, it's fun because it it's just a uh, okay. Well. If you're going to double down, I'll double down, too. It's so, it, it's like your sideshow, Bob, and you're putting the rake in front of someone and saying, don't step on this rake. And they yeah. like step on the rake and they go, <laughs> ow, why did you hit me with this rake? And it's like, yeah. did you not see me place it? Th- I placed the rake there. Why did you walk into it? Why yeah, did you do uh, that? You know, that's so weird that it's like one of the most memorable scenes from The Simpsons is yeah. just like him walking on rakes <laughs> for like two minutes straight. Yeah, yeah dude. I, I that's why I like the future on my better. Not not enough rakes in that one for me. Yeah, too many too many robots, not enough rakes. Yeah. That's pretty much my um my guide Your to two minutes of hate. My no, uh, my guide The Simpsons actually is better than Futurama. Uh, no, but I do want to get into a little bit of our own show news here. Uh, Grant and I were on the newest episode of our friend Ari Grab's podcast, Perfect Pitches. Uh, you can find that pretty much anywhere where podcasts can be located and found or on Ari Grab's YouTube channel. But we're going to talk a lot more about that next week. So stay tuned on that end. It was good, though. If you can uh, check that out, listen to it. I It was an enjoyable experience. I think we both got pretty, pretty immersed in the whole improvisational aspect of it so do your homework because we're going to have the two hosts on next week and you don't want to come in and embarrass yourself and be like what are those guys talking about you know right do your homework this thought thought cops police academy do your yeah. homework um, oh god speaking of the academy uh we're on twitch every wednesday night and sunday night from 8 p.m to 10 p.m central standard time uh twitch.tv slash thought cops uh, if you can subscribe, you got Amazon Prime. Throw us a few bucks because it's free money if you got Amazon Prime. I was streaming um, Donkey Kong Country 3 and Earthbound this week, which is a lot of fun. We had some people tuning in for that, nice. um, helping me name the characters and everything. You know, just a typical, you know, fanfare and RPGs. Like, oh, what's your what's your favorite food? And someone's like, <laughs> put shit, put shit, put loads. And it's like... <laughs> No, you can't. You can't do that. And, oh, they let me do it. They let me do it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good time. Uh, just, you know, hanging out. Um, Nico was there, too. She made uh, dinner and was showing that to the camera. What you kind know? of uh, fish? Salmon. Sa- OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got her ass. Uh, we also got a YouTube channel. So search for Thought Cops on YouTube and subscribe there because all the episodes go up on the channel as well as all kinds of extra bonus content and highlight clips. And uh, opening show off a new segment here. We, we're selling merch. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because summer's coming up. And what better way to show off your, uh, you know, you're back in public, show off your personality a little bit, saying, hey, look at me and look at my fourth or fifth favorite podcast. This is it. Thought Cops. Where'd you get that shirt? Oh, only over at teespring.com slash store slash Thought Cops. WWW, whatever. No racist font on the shirts. It may be white boy summer, but no one will confuse you for a screwdriver fan. Nope. That's a guarantee. Yeah. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you a uh, we'll send you a free one anyway. Uh but let's get right to it though. Very famous, very favorite segment of the show, which is of course two minutes of hate, where we like to blanket punish all that annoying random crap that we see on the internet every single day. Uh, my two minutes of hate, hate this week, and I uh, prefaced it by saying, ooh, this one's going to be good. Uh, my two minutes of hate this week is the 20-year nostalgia cycle. 
So actually, to quote our uh, friend of the show, Nico, she put up on Twitter something that I thought resonated with the sentiment really well was, I'm going to say something brave right now. New metal was always bad. Sans about two bands and late 90s, early 2000s fashion was hideous. I will not allow the 20 year cycle of nostalgia to try and tell me otherwise. And that got me thinking. I'm like, hmm. Back in the 80s, remember, it was like, I guess that was more of a 30 year thing, but like there was a lot of like 50s nostalgia. Yeah. And in the 90s, we were talking, there's like a lot of like goofy like disco references and things to like, oh, we're that the 70s. 70s show. Yeah, big that in was the in the 90s. 90s. It yeah. started in the 90s. It did. I think it, it went did. into the 2000s, but. And then in the 2000s, everything was like, hey, remember the 80s? Remember the 80s? You grew up in the 80s? Transformers, Smurfs, remember that? Remember that? And then the 2010s, it was like only 90s kids will remember yada, 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 you know? Uh, of course, I'm talking about the episode of Seinfeld, if you're a 90s kid. Um, and then now it's like, you know, we're uh, we're here in the 2020s, and there's a lot of, like, uh, Y2K chic, uh, like she said, all this, like, late 90s, early 2000s sort of um, revival of fashion and, uh, like, early web presence and stuff like that. And it, it's just kind of like, why, you know... VH1 should hire you. I love the, yeah, I love the 20. I love the decades. No, I just, I hate everything. <laughs> um, no, but I think it's like, I, I, my issue with it is just how predictable it is because it's like, you know, you can, what is like, it's 2021, you know, what's, what's going to be hot this year, 2001. Of course, we're all going to be reenacting the uh, September 11th attacks, oh, no. you know, for fun, for fashion. It makes me sick. So, that's my my two minutes of hate is the 20 year nostalgia cycle, because that's sort of like treated as the cutting edge of like entertainment or fashion or humor. You know, it's like. Like I said, it, back in like the last decade, it was all about like, you know, 90s. I remember like dial up member Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, you know, Yeah, and it does feel like we all got collectively sick of it, like by now mm -hmm. like there yep. were all those reboots and stuff like that and it was like oh wow they rebooted Rocco's Modern Life and we all watched it and we were like eh and then now we're on to the next one you know yeah the uh, 2000s can we just like do like the other stuff maybe just like <laughs> just wear whatever clothes you want to wear mm -hmm. and that's like my issue is again like how how predictable it is you know it's like all you simply have to do is set the clock back 20 years and be like if I look, dress, or say these kinds of things, I'll be cool. You know what I think it is? Is I think it's accelerationism because you brought up with the 80s that it was looking back at the 50s, which was a 30-year cycle. Oh, and now it's shortening okay. to 20 year cycles. Eventually it's gonna become 10 year cycles. Eventually it's gonna catch up, and then we're going to be predicting future trends before they even happen. Wow. Yeah. And I was going to say my punishment was to uh, to be present, you know, appreciate what you have in the now. Don't be focusing on the past, you know, convert to Buddhism. You know, 2001 was such a long time ago. You know, you're in 2021 right now. Embrace the present. Embrace the fact that we're all stuck inside because of a horrible virus. Do some yoga. Love it. Live it. You know, and then may, like you said, uh, Grant, maybe we'll begin predicting the future if we if we can just begin to center ourselves here in the present. Hey, you know, that was a cool aspect of like the past that I feel like we've sort of lost because you, you look at a lot of past media and you see a lot of cool retro futurism and it's not exactly like what we have now, but you look at the 80s and like the retro futurism of the 80s was like a distinct sort of look and feel and everything like that. And nowadays it's just like what we're constantly looking backwards. Why? I like um the one of the only comments on the topic was Stranger Things sucked here in the chat by Dilbert text. Thanks, Dilbert. I am not runner says, was there two thousands culture? And I, yeah. I I have heard that debate because some people think that there was no culture back then, but I do think that there's always culture. The further you get away from it, it's a lot more obvious. And I because I remember like I remember kind of becoming aware of this like when I was like in high school and stuff. I'm like, people sure are focused on like, you know, the eighties right now. Like, what are people going to be focused on, you know, 20 years from now? What? And I was like, kind of looking oh, around. You, you see it. You know it. I was looking around, like, what culture looked like and the trends were at the time, like, in, like you know, 2007, 2008. And just being like, I, you know, I bet at one point this is going to be like nostalgia or nostalgic for people is just like how people look and dress and act right. now. 
And that's such a, such a weird thought. I mean, hell, you know, 2041, what's, uh, what's going to be the thing then? Remember I don't the, know. We got to, we got to write more sci-fi, I think. It'll write itself. Um, so yeah, that's my two minutes of hate. Uh, Donovan, it's your turn, my man. Anything you want to get off your chest, anything bothering you, anything that just, just eating away at you, you want to let us know. Well, first of all, I want to just say for the record that uh, the one thing from the early 2000s that I want to come back is that, like, colored, clear plastic shit. Oh, hell yeah. Um, like, yes. everything. A hundred percent. Like, yes. the Game Boys, the old yeah. Macintosh computers. Like, I, I want that back. That's that's okay. I would, I, that would be cool as fuck. Like, I was, like, so upset that they didn't release, like, a Nintendo Switch that was that purple translucent. Yes, yeah, that purple you know, you translucent, could see through the back. Like, translucent shit was so cool. Amazing. Yeah, that, that's the, the one thing I will accept back into, like, mainstream culture. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. You know what else I miss is, like, at the turn of the century, like, late 90s, early 2000s, every music video took place in like a weird silvery looking spaceship yeah, yeah. oh you know? yeah yeah like what wh- where was that place it was like an alternate dimension that's just very shiny and bright yeah. and everyone's wearing like cyber goth clothes I why it. i fucking who knows you know <laughs> I, I i like it though i, yeah. I appreciate it um man okay so my my little uh two minute rant shit that's been bothering me um i it maybe it's it's not you know new but it's just been getting on my nerves man i fuck anybody that's talking about cryptocurrency right now yeah yeah i feel yeah. like I, I i that's a really good point because i, I was like thinking about it because I, I had someone um someone was uh someone i know was like hey uh do you guys know about dogecoin and i'm like you like, weren't you one of the people who said this was like racist to be doing like a year ago? And now it it's was like, racist. Or like, like, remember there was like some like like crypto. There was all the backlash against crypto. Like, I don't really know anything about crypto, but I know that some people said it was like. Remember the term crypto fascism? Yeah, I but I don't. think that's more sort of like because the word crypto means like encoded, like sort of hidden. So crypto fascist is sort of like you're hiding the fact that you're fascist sort of because I, I use like buzzwords. And I, stuff this like whole time that. I thought they were talking about cryptocurrency because I do think that they did make that leap where they were like, if you are a crypto coin person, you're also a racist and you're also a Nazi. Nah. I would like that. You would. I, I would take that. Yeah, no, that would make crypto fun. But I, it's it's not though. Like my my big thing with it is everybody seems to like be autistically an expert on like cryptocurrency. In, mm-hmm. in, oh like, yeah, yeah. So I I you know being the natural curious boy that I am, at, at a certain point you want to like at least understand it and know it a little bit. So you go around and you ask your buddies that are like in that to be like, hey man, can could you explain this to me? Like, how, what, what's like, give me a basic rundown. And there is none. You can ask anybody and they will give you the most convoluted fucking, like, uh, Kingdom Hearts explanation yeah, right. <laughs> of, like, what this is, what you need to do, how you need to do it. And it's like, there's no way that you, out of all people, know how to work this shit when I know for a fact that you didn't know how to wear a condom. And you have like three kids. You're no, full of shit, dude. You're, you're totally right about that. It's all the people you never expected. Like the people who were right. like, all of a sudden their whole lives go by and they're like, now I'm going to put in effort to caring about something. This and is a shift yeah. in the paradigm. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. hey man, why is your house so hot? It's like, I'm making crypto coins in here. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, what the fuck? How did you figure that out? My thing is, if you own at least... <sighs> Okay, no, if you personally spent your own hard earned dollars on uh what is it, like on Funko Pops, you don't get to tell me how to spend my money. That like that you don't judge me. Yeah. You, you don't get to well, tell anybody how to do anything if you got that many Funko Pops. True. Yeah, if you have more than I think it like the way I look at Funko Pops are kind of like how I look at cats. If you own more than three, you have a problem. Yes, I think. Yes. I think if you own more than a hundred Funko Pops, I think that the Funko Pop Corporation uh, 
um gives you a free uh vasectomy yeah yeah uh, yeah that's it's only it fair I mean, yeah it, because that's the thing like i'm a hypocrite to a degree because i uh, once i figured out on my own accord how to do it i was like all right i'm, I'm gonna throw a few dollars here and see how it goes right and everybody has this like mob hive mind yeah. with dogecoin like it's it's seriously this huge group of people that preach one word like in an idea but they completely act the opposite mm, when okay. it comes to actually doing something and that's the most frustrating thing is that the entire movement feels like it's hypocritical i also feel like such a large percentage of people that like it are, are involved in cryptocurrency at all whatsoever that like at least 90 percent of people use it as like like just playing the stock market just like an investment yeah. tool like i'm just gonna buy a bunch and the price is gonna go up and i'm gonna Stunks. make i'm gonna make a lot of money and it's like yeah, yeah. well the whole point was to like have alternative currencies outside of like fiat dollar systems and like this whole convoluted concept of like what even is money and what is value and Right. How, like are there alternatives to this model nobody uses cryptocurrency as currency very no. few people some people do i know for a fact some people do you could uh buy a hitman online using cryptocurrency and uh get caught like that one dude did um yeah my I, link is yeah. in the description right yeah <laughs> and it's like so some people use it obviously it can be used but like i don't hear people talking about using bitcoin for anything they just talk about the price has gone up like yeah, okay is ever like you see that car out front dude that new car yeah crypto bought that shit bro yeah about that like with coin like there's <laughs> some i'm sure there's some people no but it's it's like one per it's one guy yeah and his name is elon musk it's elon Jesus. musk and and what's that guy kim.com it's those two guys. Was he the guy from that documentary? Yeah, yeah. Fuck he's that he's guy. the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The mega torrent guy or whatever. The rare Pepe, whatever. No, that's a different uh, guy. Him too. Which it's like, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. If you want to use this instead of dollars, like, go ahead. You got to use dollars to buy it. But like, sure, go ahead. But yeah, it's just like a, a weird, just like, yeah, just gamble. That's mm -hmm. cool. Just go ahead, gamble, whatever. And uh, and and so my punishment for uh, anybody that has bought cryptocurrency, more specific uh, Dogecoin, you are now mandatory to get the the Elon Musk like Neuralink. And for every time, or for every coin that you bought, you are going to force forcibly have sex with uh, your parents. Oh no, Ew. dude! The it, future's it, scary, man. I and it's just the only appropriate punishment that I see fit for it, be, and that's only because I lost money. If I bought <laughs> money, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, right? Like, if, if this I, all worked yeah. out, you know, right? Yeah, like if I had made bank, then you know, I I wouldn't be talking shit, and nobody would have to fuck their dad, right? Yeah, but. But I mean, them's them the, the breaks, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it happens. That's life, you know. Uh, Grant, what do you got? Anything about anything along this kind of same lines? Fucking your parents? Yeah, something very similar. I'm ready for it. My two minutes of hate this week. Um, this has been sitting in the pile for a while. I might as well talk about this. Um, cooking instructions online. Oh, they're garbage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You ever looked up a recipe just to see like what the recipe is and you just get hounded with like someone's entire life story like uh -huh. I was born in a in a log cabin in 1912 and the, or my grandma was born in a log cabin in 1912 and with her you know uh with her whatever her old hands she used to make this and she passed it down from generation to generation and it, it existed before that and uh you know i remember i would go to my family's house and you know every every year for christmas i would go to i would go to my family's house and we would just this was just the family tradition as grandma used to always make this and i would feel such a happy warmth inside when i make it now 
I make it for my own kids and I pass this down, you know, through everything. So this tradition of food, this culture of, you know, we, we use food to share our culture and, you know, it means so much. It's, it's emotion, it's heart, it's love, it's your soul, it's your spirit. This is all in the food. And it's like, could you just give me the fucking chili recipe? And that's a problem, too, is like you're, you got your phone out, you're in the kitchen, you're scrolling, scroll. You don't want to see this bullshit. Yeah, I don't care about your fucking it's life. It's 20 scroll, scroll, pages scroll. worth of fucking yeah. novel. Yep. And then you're going and you all of a sudden like the whole page is blank and you're like, where the where the fuck is the recipe? And it's There's like, just no recipe. It's just like add, 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 add. It's like all between these breaks of this person's stupid, boring fucking life. And you're yeah. scrolling like, where are the, where are the ingredients? I, I, and like you have to like restart your fucking browser and you're like, where, where's the recipe? Dude, it, you know, the worst thing with that is getting it, when you manage to find the actual ingredients uh in that fucking you know paragraphs of shit but they don't tell you uh like what to do beforehand and then you're following it as it goes and then you're like oh i was supposed to fucking i, I don't even know because i don't actually make my food i usually instruct people so <laughs> you like, go I'm there really- you go to the kitchen <laughs> yeah give me this fetch me uh, that I'm the fucking rat and ratatouille dude, and uh, it. But like they, they should really preference shit that you need to do in advance, like yes, first, yes. right? And they never fucking do. Or like at least make it obvious, make it bold. It's like I don't, I just like I can scroll past your fucking anecdotes and get to what I came here for, and then it's like. You know, even if you have ad block on, it's just you're fucking like lost in the desert on these websites. Like, where do I find it? And then you got your thing sitting in the kitchen. You're like, I, I don't I don't know what to do because there's just so much walls of text and nothingness that you can't even find the recipe anymore. Uh, I O Nut Runner in the chat is talking some mad shit right now. He says the word yins. I don't even know what that means. Yins. I don't. I, I, think I don't um, even I don't even speak whatever language that Pennsylvanian. is. He's, he's saying buy a cookbook. Buy a cookbook. Buy buy a cookbook. You want me to buy a cookbook? I guess we're yo, all made of money, huh? Yo, if I walked into my boy's house and he had a fucking cookbook, <laughs> but the the entire night. That dude is getting fucking roasted. Absolutely. We're having him for dinner. We're roasting him. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like he's got that cookbook with the fucking like the slip cover that looks at like the picnic blanket. Yeah. Got the checker yeah, yeah. pattern on it. Like, yeah, bro, get what a, the get fuck a is that? Fella. What, what is the that a fuck's fucking... <laughs> wrong <laughs> with Come, you? Yo, he's got, he got a granny book. He's got a cookbook. And we're all fucking like roasting his ass. Uh, he, we're, yeah, fuck that. Yeah, no, 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 no. And to no. be fair, like there's reasons people do it because they want you to scroll and the more you scroll and the more time you spend on the page, you get ad money or whatever. But it's like you're going to get my ad money from me scrolling on the page because I'm going to leave the recipe open and like reopen the page numerous times while like yeah. making food like just just put it like just make just do good step by step. It's it's the same thing with I mean, people make step by step tutorials for everything else you know if i go to a website that's like oh how to how to like you know do how to fix something on the computer or like even youtube videos that you know they'll maybe throw an ad at the beginning be like hey this is how we sponsor the channel go to nordvpn.com use promo code whatever anyway let's get into it step one and then they just tell you the steps yeah for cooking for whatever reason no such thing it's all just Here's that, that, a, a 20, 20 page soft core porn romantic novel before we tell you how to make this pot roast. It's so like just you, you uh, just r- shove one off pot. before dinner. Gets your appetite up, man. I'll do it after dinner. Right now, I'm trying to make a pot roast. See, like, that's why I really wish that uh, people understood how not good majority of the tasty recipes are, because like they do ideally what I want. And like visually to to know what I'm doing to cook. I want it fast, step by step in my face. Tell me what to do, how long to do it. But Tasty's recipes, nine times out of 10 are never good. I own it and I was uh, posting screenshots of an Overwatch cookbook. 
This is the that. opposite Just of a solution. You be this quiet the rest the- of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Tracer's ass is in that cookbook, I don't want it, dude. Or you know what's better? Like, do you know why cookbooks are good? Because cookbooks do the same shit. They, oh, blah, my name's Rachel Ray. These are 30 simple recipes. Right, right. I blah, blah, blah. I used to be a chef for however long. And then I had a TV show. You can watch it on ABC. She does all this shit, too. Except, you know what it has? It has a table of contents. So you can just go, I don't care about this. If you want to, you can read it. I don't know why you would want to. It's kind of sad, really. You just do 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 a table. That's the punishment. Do a table of contents for your fucking cookbook. Just at the top, do table of contents. One boring shit. Page two, the actual recipe. Just so I can just go, okay, well, I want the recipe. And no ads. Plus, yeah. if you click, like, you can link to your own page which is more clicks for your page, which makes more ads appear. So, I mean, that'd be within everybody's benefit to just go, hey, do you want to skip this part? Yeah. Just give me a button to skip it. I would buy chef's cookbooks if it had, like, their ludes in it as well. That's what I'm saying. You know, rub one off and, uh, you know, have a little meal. At least wash your hands in between. That's all I'm asking. If I could get Guy Fieri's cookbook and it had like pictures of him in a banana hammock absolutely yeah i'd buy it a hundred percent imagine him like his his pubes are like also dyed in spite Uh, i've never wanted to think of guy fieri's pubes have you did you guys were you around when i pissed off people making fun of guy fieri on twitter I think I might have missed might that have one. I don't particularly remember, but it wasn't too long ago, and it was really funny because it took me completely off guard. How like not okay to joke about Guy Fieri? Apparently, it is. There's a lot of uh, Fieri apologists these days. Like it's I, weird. he was such an object of ridicule for a long time, and then people right. are like, I mean, he's not a bad guy. Like, there's a lot of bad guys in the world, like actual villains, you know? Yeah. Guy Fieri's not one of them. He's just eating food. Leave him alone. Yeah. Yeah, right. But no, I won't. <laughs> I don't I mean, think that. <laughs> he is an easy target. And he yeah. makes himself look like an easy target. I mean, he just, he dresses the way he dresses and he his hair looks the way that it does and it, he wears his sunglasses on the back of his head sometimes which i don't understand but like i, I don't you have choose to ge- do that i have no genuine hate for the man whatsoever i, I really don't i just like poking fun at, at things and everyone sure so like when i did it there was no ill intent right but so many people got pissed off that they did that thing i, I mentioned earlier where it's like Dude, you can't make fun of Guy Fieri. And it's like, oh, I can't? Okay, well, I'm going to spend the next hour thinking of the most horrendous Guy Fieri jokes, and I'm going to at you at every single one of them. What was the reasoning behind it? Like, was there, like, some, like, you can't say this about him because of whatever? Like, there's some, like, he's a protected class of citizen or something? So it was kind of like what you said earlier, like, that. He's a good guy. He does good things. Like, and and if we're basing that level of like, you know, oh, he does good things. It's like, well, I mean, Bill Cosby donated a lot of money to black colleges. So like, you know. Right, right. Where, where do right. we draw this line? Those are right? on equal footing, yeah. And then Guy Fieri <laughs> also did what, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. He also drugged a lot of women. Yeah. Uh, well, we don't it, know but, that yet, you know. Oh, I was there. I watched it happen. And you didn't stop him? No, I. it was hot, dude. <laughs> it, 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 he was taking her to Flavortown. I was here for it. Oh, that's there a, it is. That's a great segue <laughs> to the main uh, meat and potatoes of the show. So if you haven't listened to Thought Cops before, every week we investigate the Internet's outrage-inducing news stories, and then we sentence each perpetrator to a cruel and often quite unusual punishment. Let's do it. Let's talk about the uh, the Ben Shapiro Home Depot video. Hell yeah. <laughs> did you see this one, Donovan? Yeah, I did. I loved it. This is like, it's it's nearly like alternative sketch comedy. I yeah, swear to God. It feels like a bit, right? Which, should we start with like the whole, should we do the whole no, video? It, it's only like a minute. Not even. Yeah, there's, there's two videos. One that went viral well, is that the one, shorter one. That one's only like three seconds. 
It's nine seconds, but okay, well, six second difference. Yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll play the longer one because it it adds the context. It's not what went viral, but it's it's the whole thing. Here we are at Home Depot. As you know, controversy has now involved Home Depot as people are encouraging people to boycott Home Depot because Home Depot is not getting involved in Georgia's voter law controversy. Home Depot is doing exactly the right thing because, after all, they are, in fact, Home Depot. They are not, in fact, in the business of housing because you should be buying from companies that are not falling to the world left. Home Depot, so far, is one of those companies. So here's what we're doing. And I encourage you to do the same. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to buy some stuff. And then I'm going to leave. Now, this is the funny one. This is the funny part right here. It's right after this. All right, as you can see, I just went shopping at Home Depot. You should do the same. He is this holding up board, a wooden board with board, a bag on it. This magnificent piece of poplar is now mine. So was there was there more than that, or was that that's, the end of it? That, that's where all. He just I, says that's, yeah, that's all it is. Because it was the image that was getting passed around was this picture of him in the Home Depot par- parking lot, where he's got this uh, two by four that has just this random bag hanging off the end of it. And people are saying, oh, that's uh, you fool, you imbecile. That's part of the joke. He's in on it. I don't really know what that what he's meant to be know in on the here. Joke, like the only joke that I can derive from this is the concept that all of these people that make these types of things, again, have a humiliation fetish and get off on people just like raging at them. And I mean, just, that's like, the only thing I can think of, of like, because I really, yeah, yeah, I can't. Like you're con- you're making yourself look stupid so that people can call you stupid so that what's the end goal that people think that you're stupid and you can go, ha ha, you think that I'm stupid. You fell for the trick. Got me. Hilarious. What's that? I love Trisha Paytas, dude. Oh, is that a, a, a thing? With- I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I just feel like that's that's a lot of people now. Yeah. Like, uh, people lean into the the whole like negative pr thing because like as long as you're you know not diddling kids or like doing forceful things on women you have a way of generating income and being like a, a personality based off of that right so i mean maybe that's it i don't think so though i mean i don't know at the end of the day i don't fucking know ben but right. it's just the whole thing just feels very surreal and like it, it i don't know what to take from it and that's what makes me laugh yeah it's weird he cuts away to like these old-fashioned you know yeah, like the 50s people. and weird shit yeah like he's, things, I, things you know don't he's going look for? like that he's I mean. going for like the reject modernity embrace yeah, tradition yeah. kind of yeah, thing yeah yeah but this is what they took from us <laughs> you're right right <laughs> they took my uh little bag with a piece of wood inside yeah um i so, guess the only the only way to address this is to look at it from both angles which is just like okay he's in on the joke and he knows what he's doing which i guess we sort of did um try and address i i guess uh and the other angle is to take him seriously which is like what are you doing i don't know it's like he's talking so fucking fast like he's a <laughs> Like, imagine if you just walk by that guy. Like, he's, what, like, five feet tall? He's like, <laughs> he looks like a fucking, like, he's got, like, the, he's, like, got abs now or something you can see through his shirt. He looks like a little Keebler, like, Jack's little Keebler elf who's, like, <laughs> complaining about the woke left and they're not buying enough wood anymore, you know? It's almost as confusing as that Adam Carolla tweet, remember? Oh, uh, yeah, today's but- men are... Uh, it, what was it? They're they're wearing too many bracelets and not eating enough stew or whatever the fuck it yeah, was. Like what? Yeah. What is? What is? Like again, I don't know if we're meant to be in on this or not because it makes no sense. Right? No, it, it, he kind of has the same energy as those guys, those people that would like come to your elementary school and like swindle you into selling chocolate. Oh God! You know. I think at our school, it was like magazines for Mm -hmm. summer, like mag. I don't know even what the magazines were just like people magazine, just like sell some people magazines. Like why? Yeah, that was weird. Why do we have to do that? It was was that legal. (laughs) Yeah, It was like chocolate bars and magazines. It was like, yeah, go door to door, sell this stuff. You're a kid. Do this. It's part of your homework. Don't you want an A? It was uh, was really weird because they also at, at the same time, they encouraged you to go out but they also were very explicit on not going to strangers. So it was like, I, what do you, what do you mean? You, you, who, who are we selling this to? Because I only talk to my parents. I'm a child. 
You get some what do you mean? gullible grandparents, maybe, you know, give them a call. <laughs> you want to buy a uh, TV guide, a uh, two year subscription, you know? So then it became the parents' job to take it to their job and then be like, hey, my kid is selling magazines. And, yeah, and yeah. Then everybody else in the office was like, okay, but mine too. That, I mean, it's still the case. Like, I mean, last year when I was in the office, like people, like their kids were selling candy bars at school. Like, hey, you want to buy a candy bar? My kid's selling it for school. And it's like, how much is that? Five dollars? No, I'm good. I'll get the same thing at Seven Eleven for yeah, exactly. dollar. Cashew in the chat says because the government won't fund our schools, and that's probably likely. But I mean, nonetheless, I mean, it just it it feels like baby's first pyramid scheme. Yeah, oh, it is. And we wonder I, why so many of uh, these stay-at-home moms around our age are on Facebook with these MLMs. You know, have you all yeah, gotten yeah. any MLM people reach out to you? Yes, like as, they email especially us especially lately. They, they've been emailing thought cops a lot, but like re- reached out to you personally, like an old friend from like high school. That's like, hey, man, how's it going? Like, haven't talked to you in a while. Just just checking in to see what's up. And you're like, hey, not not too much. Just uh, I don't it, know. Like on Facebook or something. I've Facebook, Instagram, text messages. I've got like during the pandemic, I had like a sizable amount of people do this. No, I didn't. Yeah. And you're just like, OK, I'll have a conversation with you. Sure. Why not? We're all sitting at home doing nothing, right? And it's like, have you ever thought about, you know, the fact that you could be making more money? And it's like, interesting icebreaker. Why are you talking to me, please? And then you're like, shut up, Grandma. You're supposed to be in the nursing home. (laughs) (laughs) They told me I have to sell this candy or they'll kill me. Yeah. Eh, Whatever, Grandma. No, and that's Ben Shapiro. That's what I'm getting at. And I don't know in the chat says um, wood prices are very high right now. Everyone is stuck at home doing uh, home improvements. So they raise the prices. Wood sky high, baby. Yeah. So is that what this is all about? Like Ben Shapiro's like, uh, what is he like a no. paid spokesperson? You think like, For no. wood? yeah, big, <laughs> big wood. <laughs> big wood. <laughs> He's, he, he fucking, he had to re like uh, masculate himself because of the whole WAP thing. He's doing, he's like one of those people that like, I think his whole production studio moved from like California to Tennessee. And now every time you see him, he's driving like a big ass Ford, which he can barely see over the steering wheel and wearing like a big 10 gallon hat, a big 10 gallon cowboy hat. That that is one of my favorite like conservative traits. Yeah, it's I love it. I I fucking love it because it's like. One second you're in a really nice suit that, and you're only about like you right. know uh, passing a bill, and you know that. And then the next time they see you like doing campaign shit, or you have to be out in public, it's you know the same mo, just either a plain t-shirt, a plain colored, or a flannel, and it's always tucked in, and you're wearing your belt, and you have your your Levi jeans, and you look like you have done manual labor but you know that you have it all of these all of these people if if you look at like the career paths and trajectories of anybody who's like any level of pundit like like most people not just conservative like liberal whoever but specifically a lot of conservatives because they do have that aspect of like yeah i'm I'm a down-to-earth blue-collar worker they're all like rejected actors yeah because like like, they're just like hollywood chewed them up and spat them out and then they're just like, yeah, I'm a I'm a blue collar worker. It's like you're a multimillionaire that's an actor that failed out of acting and just like found a useful grift. And like, you, like, I've heard a yeah. lot of things where like a lot of I don't doubt that Ben Shapiro is sincere in a lot of his beliefs and what he says. But I've heard that a lot of these people like definitely aren't that like once the cameras are off, they're just I don't give a fuck. So you mentioned yeah, he's got like, this big 10-gallon hat now. I gave him five years till he gets fired from the Dimsdale Dimodome because <laughs> they got too woke. Wait, uh, I, I'm sorry, man. It, Don Jr., there's, you own a cabin in the woods, and that's it. Like, you, you, you've never done a right. hard day's work in your fucking life, man. Like, And I'm not even coming from an orange man bad aspect. Right, it's just, right common sense like, it's the dude, grift no. exactly no. yeah <laughs> it's like when uh don jr puts those uh videos of him lifting online yeah. and they're like oh man they're like the worst things i've ever seen in my life why do people do that 
I, I, I have a weird love for those that shit, man. It just makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> it should. Just, it, 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 I think the more people I see eat it up, the happier I get. So what should we do for the punishment here? Uh, right, ben Shapiro yeah. and the Home Depot. Um, well, I I have sort of an interesting take on this because the, the whole thing is whether or not companies should be allowed to be involved in politics, you know, because that was his thing is like, oh, they're not caving to the woke mob. It, it it's it, He's doing a reverse cancel culture, right? Where he's saying, oh, well, cancel culture does that, but I'm doing the opposite. I'm doing, you should go and support these businesses, which is fine. But it's all the, all on the premise of like, companies shouldn't be involved in politics, especially if they disagree with my politics. But when they do, because every corporation fucking lobbies, like we all know these things, like there's no such thing as an apolitical corporation. And maybe they speak out on some things and not other things, but uh, ben Shapiro's The Daily Wire is a corporate entity, so I think the punishment should be he doesn't get to talk about politics as a mouthpiece for that company. He should just shut up. Uh, as an addendum to that, Dilbert sure. Tech says he gets splinters with tiny bags on the end of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. I like that. Uh, so, you know, we were mentioning about things... Um, being uh, too quote unquote woke now. Uh, there was an article that went up this week, uh, which apparently I cannot view because it is for subscribers only. Oh, is it? Well, um, we at really, least on my phone. We or, really. Oh, God no, it is. It. Motherfucker. I hate this shit. Hey, we're trying do you to have do a show. Or, I guess you do. I think I see it up there. Yeah. No, this is you have to. Well, I think we really only need the headline. Yeah. Because. <laughs> It's all you ever really need pulled up. And I'm like, no, I'm going to link to the articles for, oh, you know, um, I have some quotes from the article. Right. Um, uh, well, let me, let me find, you, let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Let me find like the actual. I hate that shit. Fucking derailing our show with their paywall. Well, it, in the meantime, I will say that my punishment for Ben Shapiro would be uh, he has to live stream himself building something really elaborate out of wood, but just that one single piece of wood. That'd be hilarious. Like, what What are you going to do with this? What are you going to make with this? Because that's my big thing, right? Like, you didn't buy that with the intent on, of using it. So either build something with that one piece of wood or show a video of you returning it immediately afterwards. Yeah, there should be a follow up. All right, so so the, I I found it. Uh, the Twitter account is at Orlando Sentinel. It's a newspaper, and like this, just the image, just the tweet has just been making the rounds <laughs> because it's it's just so it's so good to look at. So it's a picture of this guy. That doesn't look too well. He has one lazy eye, and he's he's a little, a little bigger. He uh, has some Disney figurines in the background. He's wearing sort of like a, not like a, not like a Hawaiian shirt, but it's like a, a almost like a Hawaiian print, like Disney themed shirt. It looks yeah. like yeah. And the caption is, "I love Disney World, but wokeness is ruining the experience." And it links to the article. And I mean, this man is clearly over 40 and it's like what do you i mean why like, are you in disney world is sir? he is he mad about it's a small world like how long has that ride been around for like oh they got a, all these cultures and creeds coming together and singing about the yeah guy this has gone too far <laughs> or is he just I, I mad he just like went to he went to the epcot globe once and he's like had a fucking panic attack because he's like i have to learn about other cultures <laughs> where are the roller coasters and it's wild because you can get fucked up at at, at at God. Like you can genuinely get shit based if you wanted to. True. True. So like I don't understand why you're having a a negative experience at Disney World. Well, so I have I have a couple quotes because people have been tweeting out quotes I'm from ready, the I'm article. Um. So somewhere in this, he says, "quote More broadly, like many corporations, Disney has been politicizing its business." Which, 
again, just to bring up, just not to belabor the point, but every fucking corporation is a political entity. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, I am a Christian and a conservative Republican, so the people who run Disney and I do not see eye to eye. I'm sure you do. Um, <sighs> he says further along, um, Disney is in the process of taking the woke scalpel to the jungle cruise. Trader Sam is out because he might offend certain people. Every grown up in the room realizes the Trader Sam is not a representation of reality and is meant to be a funny and silly caricature. Every grown up in the room, sir, Disney World is for children. <laughs> and I was going to say this also brings me to the main point here as well is that this turned into a war on Disney adults, which uh, Disney yeah, adult that's what it is. And I'll, we'll just say that's the thought cops word of the week this week is a Disney adult. Yeah. Which is uh, people who like adults who enjoy uh, Disneyland, Disney World, things like that. And I know some people in the discord, there is a bit of a uh, debate in the thought cops discord this week between uh, Disney adults and non Disney adults. We even have like, I don't I don't know if this is a copy pasta or not. But it's turned into a copy pasta yep, no, in the was, Discord. That is like somebody in the Discord who said that, <laughs> and they just kept copying and pasting it. What does it say? Uh, feel free to use this at home. <laughs> I feel like this is bullying, but it's done out of love. Um, I'm, ready. I'm 32 years old and what some might describe as a Disney adult. It does read like a copy pasta. Wife and I have gone to Disney World slash land many times as adults. We've been to Disney Paris and Tokyo, too. I genuinely don't like how Marvel slash Star Wars dependent the parks are becoming, but I also understand the parks don't owe it to me to be exactly as they were when I enjoyed them most. Um, Seems reasonable, which is reasonable. It's like I don't, I don't have anything against Disney adults like whatever you, you want to go to these parks. You want to have fun. I, I don't care. Do whatever you want. We, we only have so much time on this planet. Have as much fun as you want. Hey, to. If but I could like, be at Super Nintendo Land right now, I would be. I, I fucking want to go there. Um, but like at the same time, yeah, have a little bit of reasonability with it. Like understand your place in society with regards to any of this shit, you some know, just humility. sort of have, have some humility, have some understanding. Um, this guy oh. says it is no more based in racism than every Disney, Disney caricature of an out of touch, out of touch, white American dad, American dad. Don't tell me they're adding him. Uh, he's he's a Disney property, isn't he? Is he owned by Fox? He's owned by yeah. Disney. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know, man. Like for me, Disney World is for for uh, families that are doing well off financially, yeah. uh, dying children, and uh, just the the weird Disney adult people. Like I I don't know, man. I I, I know personal friends that their entire personality is like disneyland and i i I, yeah i mean like i (laughs) I, yeah i i I give them shit i do because that's weird like i get it don't get me wrong we we all have like a thing at the end of the day but i think it's okay to have things but yeah when people turn anything too much into their entire personality i know i i know a couple that like has gone to disney world just like They've been together for 14 years. They've been to Disney World together 10 years. They got engaged at Disney World. They got married at Disney World. Like, that's all that they talk about is when's the next. It's just like, dude, do do, watch a TV show. Like, just play a video game. Do something. Come on. Watch something on Disney Plus. Play (laughs) Kingdom Hearts. You know, there's so many options. They they will also do like sit there and watch Disney movies all day. Mm -hmm. It's just like do something like it walk to walk to a store and talk to a person i will say touch like the, grass <laughs> that that's and apparently that's bad to say too yeah touch grass oh my god isn't that dumb as shit dude yeah uh, oh my god like i will that, say that like one got me i i i do not like the hyper hyper consumerism culture of disneyland because the only time i really do go to disneyland is for uh mega 64 game days which if it happens this year, I'll probably go again. Um, I kind of doubt it will, but you know, when I do go, it, it, the the gift shops, the merchandise, the like, toys, it's just the people there will like they're everybody's 
wearing something they bought in the park for the most part. And sometimes it's like claustrophobic. Like I'm walking around and like there was like a point where I got lost for my friends and I, I was like the only person who was wearing a shirt I bought outside the theme park. Walking around Disneyland wearing a, a shirt with the Twin Towers and Cloud Strife. That's the shit I would do. <laughs> Saying first responder, uh, says on the first responder 9-11. It's a great shirt. Shout out Slime to Garbage Main for that one. Um, but how yeah. stupid is it that I just tried to read the Roman numerals and I'm it's like, oh, of course it's 9 11. What am I dumb? Yes, never forget. <laughs> I forgot it'll be back in vogue this year. Don't worry. But it's, yeah, I mean, what do you say here? They're, they're oh, they're, they're they're taking the woke scalpel to Pirates of the Caribbean. Also, like that terminology made me laugh earlier. The woke scalpel, like these are like precise surgeons you know who are like yeah cutting yeah. open the bloated corpse of mickey mouse and removing all of their racism from his belly and just throwing it in the trash yeah dude that's what i i don't i've been trying to like really put my my finger on what bothers me so much about people that make disney world and disneyland their personality and i think it just comes down to blatant like consumerism like you said yeah. like just blind blindly it doesn't matter like i think everybody deep down in their heart of hearts knows that disney is just evil at its core right like i feel like we can all agree to a certain extent like they do do cool things to an extent for sure yeah. but but like the the power that they have is so just arguably not good Right, right, right. So it just participating in that when like everybody uh, gives off this like anti-capitalist, you know, uh, very, uh, you know, fuck the system kind of vibe, but will be the first one at the doors to Disneyland right, right. when yeah. it opens up. It's that like, is yep, true. That's my thing. That is true. Fuck the system, but also like. I need the system. Yeah. And it's like you said, Grant, though, it's it's good to have your thing, you know, and I do want right. to quote I own that runner in the chat earlier. He said something that um, I thought was interesting. He said, this reminds me of the picture of that guy with a hundred anime figurines behind him. And the caption is he has the money to buy these and he's happy. What are you doing with your life? Yeah, fine. And that's fine. But it's like, fine. I think, Donovan, yeah, yeah. your your point is more of the hypocrisy where it's like, if you're going to, you know, yeah, yeah, truly become a, you know, a um a Twitter revolutionary and then talk about, uh, ooh, I can't wait to go to Disneyland when they open before the mask mandates up, you know? Um, yeah, but that's and, and buy like my, like, you know, like 37 shirts of like Jack Skellington on them. It's, you know, maybe, maybe again, have a little, just a little humility right but otherwise yeah you're right i i don't have a problem like i would fucking love to go to universal studios and disney world around like halloween i'm a slut for that shit like you know what i mean i love a good spooky theme park yeah or like uh, uh what is it uh six flags does that what's yeah. that halloween thing they do they do like the the horror but i don't know like fright fest cool. i think yeah yeah that's yeah. yeah yeah that's and there's cool. there's like I can respect a certain level of just like oh they they changed the the uh the tower of terror to uh to what I like the guardians of the galaxy ride or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it is sort of like it does suck when it's like okay, well I remember you know going there and going on that ride and stuff like that and like now it's just not there and like I understand feeling sort of like a uh like maybe not a resentment but like sort of like a loss at some of those things when it's just like oh people aren't experienced but that's also just like the change of time like it's not a time capsule it's not going to exist forever like these things are around because they were popular and now they're replacing things with things that are just as popular as that was however long ago like that's just the turning wheel of time like actually Grant, I, I heard they're changing it again oh yeah they're changing it to the tower of tolerance <laughs> that's hell yeah that. uh, every, every layer you uh, learned a different microaggression that you shouldn't use. 
Or but you go, you go past it so fast that just like, you don't even absorb any of it. You know, you just, exactly. get the, you just get the, whoa, here's the drop. And then, oh yeah, I think I saw, I'm not supposed to say, you know, a few words I was saying right. uh, in conversation and passing with some friends uh, in yep. private, not in public, of course, uh, apparently I'm not supposed to do that. Well, uh, but the drop is good. There's one more quote. And I think that this might be the most egregious. I wish that we had the whole thing here to tear apart, but I'm not paying 99 cents to read this fucking article. Yeah, fuck that. So what is it? The Orlando Times? What was it? <sighs> Who knows? The Orlando Sentinel? Get a name yourself a real newspaper, okay? Fuck Orlando. Either Just the Times general. or the Tribune. It has to be one of those two words, or else you're not a real newspaper. Yeah, this is get the fact. fuck out yeah. of here. Hate to say it, fake news. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh here's here's the quote. Uh Disney proclaims that Splash Mountain must change because of its association with Song of the South, which let's let's all back up and just point out the fact that like Disney's been trying to downplay Song of the South for decades since its existence. Yes, yeah, so they they released it and they're like, oops, <laughs> oh no. Hey, so they just like dropped a dinner plate and they're like, <laughs> oh, somebody's got to pick this up. And then just been sitting there since the 50s. Right. And so like obviously they're not too happy about it eventually they were gonna take that out so he says uh disney owns splash mountain so it can do what it wants uh apt point but if disney screams at the top of its corporate voice which is pretty loud that it is changing to appease a certain political point of view now every time i look at the ride i am thinking about politics Sir, it sounds like everything you do, you're looking at politics constantly. Like, yeah, just right? imagine fucking trying to exist in real life and just getting angry at everything all the time. Because what? Because Disney said that racism is bad, that you can't stop thinking about politics, that politics is you thinking that racism is bad. Like, I just I don't fucking get it. I don't get any of this mindset. Just want to be a kid again. He says the same with Pirates of the Caribbean or Caribbean. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Disney has made significant changes to Pirates of the Caribbean or Caribbean over the years. Whether Disney caved to political pressure or really thought the alterations were necessary is irrelevant. So what are you talking about? What's the point in talking about any of this if all of it's just irrelevant? If like the if it doesn't matter why they changed it, like. You're just throwing a fit because you're a 50 year old man that kind of looks like a pedophile that like <laughs> is pissed off about a children's theme park because a company that like Donovan said is an inherently evil corporation like thinks that maybe children shouldn't see like bad racist stuff. Like yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what to make of any of this shit. It makes me very angry that I'm worked out worked up about this at all because i don't care you mentioned he looked like a pedophile and now that you mention it he dresses a lot like that guy who got fired from pixar who made his employees give him hugs oh jesus remember that N no but he he looks sort of like don Vito, uh bam margera's yeah, uncle he, he does he looks he like looks like a better off don Vito. right and don Vito was a convicted like uh sex offender so I'm just saying, you get that lazy eye, sir. Gee, that, well, I was like, you know, when, when you were describing him, I was like, please don't mention the lazy eye. It's not even relevant. And that was the first thing you said. And you not only did you mention it first, but I you sat on it. And then you started to mention the things in the background. Oh, by I, the way, there's I got this Scooby t-shirt. I had to, because we're painting an oral picture, not an oral, but an oral picture for the listeners at home that maybe aren't on Twitter. I have to tell people what this guy looks like. He looks like Don Vito. Yes. He looks he looks like a pet like if someone were to be like, "Hey, tell me what a pedophile looks like." You'd describe this guy. You say with a mustache and then large yeah. uh framed glasses. I'm going for the serial killer vibe, not the pedophile vibe. The guy who eats kids, not fucks him. Yeah. Okay. One's much more moral than the other. So let's this was just the fashion in the 70s. It wasn't that all serial killers wore these glasses and had mustaches. It's just that a lot of people in the 70s had mustaches and wore these glasses. And again in the and 90s. Some of them yeah. happened to be serial killers. I don't know what to tell you. So to punish uh, this guy, this uh, Disney adult, as it were. Um, I mean, it's punishment enough. You couldn't go to the park for so long, you know? Um, I think that they really should 
uh, I'm trying to think like what they could change it to where like they, it's like one of those things where you know how there, there was that trope in like tv shows and movies and possibly even real life where they trick the kid and they're saying hey we're going to we're going to take you to disney world and he's like oh yay and then they drive past and he's like we're not going to disney world and it's like yeah you're going to the dentist you know they should do that for this guy where they're like he's like hey get in the car bud we're going to disneyland he's like oh yippee and he gets in the car and they drive past disneyland and he's like wait i we we passed it back there and then he's like no you're going to tolerance camp and they send him to a uh, training seminar where he it's like a sleepaway camp for adults around his age who think that everything is too woke and he has to learn to be uh he has to learn to be uh t- in his words think about everything through a political lens or every he has to see politics everywhere and maybe he'll realize that um you know you know, kids just want to have fun too, you know? I like that. I have an additional one to that because this was uh, ticking in my mind as I'm thinking about this and the fact that, you know, like like we sort of mentioned, he can he can never not see politics. <laughs> uh, Nazi politics. You catch that? Um, I did now. You, you remember now that I pointed it out? <laughs> um, you know that uh, John Carpenter film... <laughs> That John Carpenter film, They Live, mm-hmm. yeah. with the uh, the glasses, and you see all the all the stuff in the glasses. That guy just has those glasses taped to his head. They're stapled into his head. What whatever he, uh, they're gorilla glued to his face. So nonstop, uh, every time he sits down and like looks at, I, I don't know if this guy's married or has a wife or anything. Anytime he looks at any family member, he's just constantly thinking of like the social dynamics of like why does my wife have a job and why are my children going to college when they should be going what they should be going to the trades and how come how come like uh you know anything why do i go to disneyland still and i'm 45 (laughs) he has to confront those issues there's not a single thing where he doesn't see like the truth in the heart of the matter at all times and he's just constantly thinking about it and i don't know how that film ends but his brain explodes or something a big fist fight right um i like that i do too let's move on to one more story here yeah. uh apparently showering is bad i heard that yeah this isn't news by the way this is just viral this is uh the telegraph says uh before you take a shower next time read this and they have a thread on twitter as hygiene habits have changed throughout lockdown experts are noting that the environmental and physical benefits of showering less so they say, um, apparently the idea that we need to use soap all over our body is not founded in any type of science. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the scientists only you washes his, uh, washes with water and occasionally wets his hair. Um, he says, I mean, this is psychopathic, but like, he does use soap to wash his hands, I guess, you know, cause like you wipe your butt, you wash your hands, you know, um, says uh, one argument for showering less centers around the skin microbiome, the trillions of microorganisms that live on the skin surface. Uh, Some microbes feed off the oils in our skin, which are stripped away when we use soap. Yeah. I mean, hell, I would love to shower less, but I mean, I thought it was, I thought I was doing a good thing showering every day, almost every day, twice a week. What? I thought that, I don't know. Wait, every day or twice a week? I was what? kidding. I just want to say that this is, I mean, like, this is like almost reminds me when they were trying to get us to eat bugs. You know, there's like, I don't I, think every, it's exactly the same. Every few, every few months, there's a thing on Twitter where it's like bugs could, you know, contain all, all kinds of protein and eating them could save the world, you know? And now it's like, hey, by the way, you don't have to shower every day or whenever you I want think, to i think it was probably one of those things that for a long time throughout all of human history that people like didn't shower all the time and like i know how that sounds but like you look at animals in the wild that are like they have their own sort of microbiome and stuff like that and it's not as though they don't like go into water and shit like that not not as though humans don't have their own sort of like hygienic levels that societally need to be adhered to but I can see how, like, the constant use of, like, some of these chemicals, especially, like, harsh soaps and stuff like that, mm-hmm. just, like, ruin, like, your skin. There's You have a layer on your skin called the horny layer. I don't know if you know this. This is, this is science, folks. Uh, it's the horny layer. And every time you shower, you wash off that horny layer. I don't like that. I don't like that either. <laughs> you don't like I, that. I like to keep my horny layer. 
Yeah. It makes well, me feel whole. Yeah. So shower less. And I think that's why there's a, you know, people like to buy more of these natural soaps and, and stuff, but it doesn't even mention like necessarily that. It just says the chemicals in soap in general is, I don't know. It's just bad. Yeah. And they're but, saying you, you don't even have to wash. It's like, yeah, you don't have to even wash your whole fucking body. Like the one guy is like the one scientist says, he's like, yeah, sometimes I get my hair wet. Yeah, I mean that's psychopathic. Like wa- wash your fucking hair. But I do think that there there is there's a level to truth to this. Like like everything, uh the truth is found in the middle. IO Netrun in the chat says it's Smash Bros uh propaganda because of course or any any speedrunner out there, you know, of course, you don't have time to be cleaning and scrubbing your body, you know? You got to get good. Well, and specifically Smash players for whatever reason couldn't tell you i mean like obviously take care of your hygiene shower but i i think that there's probably a point to this where it's like yeah i don't know like i feel like growing up my parents would shower like twice a day like once in the morning once at night and then wake up shower in the morning shower before like it is just like i think that that's pro- like that in and of itself also seems to be sort of like compulsory behavior that i don't think that most people did that for a while but you just sort of get conditioned to thinking like this is just how i'd start and end every day but it's like that might be excessive and what i find interesting here is the reason that this got brought up like i said was that people are showering less in lockdown apparently i don't know i I don't know where the data on this is coming from but self-reported i'm assuming people are saying that they're not showering as much I, you know it's like oh i don't have to go to the office you know i'll just roll out of bed you know whatever yeah, you're um, just wearing the same clothes for weeks yeah no, who's gonna know so that's kind of like what sparked this conversation and then they're saying in this it, article it, going viral it, it's kind of like the same thing where it's like do we need to work in an office we can save money and time by working from home and then it's like oh by the way uh you don't even have to wash yourself as much as you are uh also who wants bugs Oh, I, do. I don't know. I want to keep. I'm not, I know it's maybe you think that's a leap. I just think it's a funny connection to make. I, I guess. Um, the chat I guess. here is saying eat bugs, don't shower, work for cheap, watch Marvel, listen to Thought Cops. Hard to yeah. argue that. Th- that's the cycle of life. And it moves us all. Yep, there it is. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, um, like you said, went viral this week, or I guess as of this recording yesterday. Um, so. Yeah, it says the pandemic has pushed us back towards a more primitive way of washing. Return to monkey. That's what, yeah, that's what cashew in the chat here says. Return to monkey. It's about time we did. Yeah, I just need to throw my shit at everybody. (laughs) Good. Everybody deserves it. At this point, yeah. And I think that is a good punishment. Return to monkey, you know? It's been too long. It's been a long time coming. With uh, the, the Disney guy? I think that a good punishment for him is that they closed down Disney for another year, but this time around, he has to be the one to tell all the Make-A-Wish kids why they can't go to Disney World anymore, Uh, and it's his fault. (laughs) Sorry, kids, I know it was your last wish to come here, but, you know, they got the woke agenda here, so I just just won't allow it. It's like, well, I just want to go on the rides. Yeah, but, you know, they got... They took but, away they took away the Sambo kid off the ride, you know, don't you don't you miss that? They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I I I'm sorry, sir. I have cancer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what you mean. Uh so before we move on to our uh final segment of the show, which is our listener voicemails and everything else, I want to go to our key to the city, which is uh something nice, something swell, something good that we saw this week. Uh my two minutes of or my my two minutes of key this week goes to uh speaking of return to monkey goes to the golden snub nosed monkey uh if you want to pull up that video Grant. oh yeah so it's this monkey he just you know walking around <laughs> like they're just eating out snacks. of people's hands he's just hanging out just chewing on these whatever they are berries nuts something he's vibing chomping and it's like, if you saw that little guy, would you offer him a snack? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. And apparently these guys, these guys are going <laughs> extinct. 
you know? Oh, that's a lot of animals. Yeah, so I think, you know, let's uh let's stop killing them and let's start feeding them. <laughs> yeah, I, I free delay. You know, whatever whatever you're munching on. I would die for this monkey. Uh, me too. Like in a heartbeat, no questions asked. I would take a bullet for a golden snub nose monkey. A- amen. Uh, Donovan, do you have a key to the city this week? Something cool, swell, nice, hip, great. Hip and great. I love that. Um, so this one, well, like, to, it made me really think, right? Because I, I had to take a minute to realize, like, I think I might be in this negative mindset where, like, my mind just refuses to take in any good. I only manage to, like, find the negative in anything. Yeah. And yeah. that's like both a blessing and a curse at the same time. But I did manage to find one thing and it's uh, almost every other tweet from the, the dudes posting their W's Twitter account. Oh yeah. I, there's I, some... I love the entire account because it's so good and just genuinely wholesome for the most part. Where. And it kind of, it's funny to see the difference between women posting their W's versus like men posting their W's. How so? Twitter. Well, because, okay, so like an average women posting their W's Twitter, uh, like tweet, it's like, oh, I sent a, a, a picture of my own nudes to my ex-boyfriend and their partner saw it and now they broke up and they're unhappy. And, you know, that's like a win. Wait, like uh-huh. a guy posting their win is like, I managed to beat all of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas with like <laughs> the monkey bongos from Donkey Kong. <laughs> and and yeah. I and I feel really proud of myself for that. Yeah, and I I feel like that account specifically seems to celebrate things that maybe like men are like looked down upon for like partaking in like vi- like oh i played too many video games like yeah, society yeah. will tell you that's a bad thing but this guy's like hey i did something i'm proud of and everyone's like yeah yeah good job All right nice job man yeah like uh, it, it's something as simple as like oh i found a really cool stick today and it's like dude fuck yeah that's awesome <laughs> fuck yeah dude yeah. i love cool sticks and I, I just love that entire account it's so good it's w for sure uh grant what's your w for us this week um so my key to the city this week um i'm gonna drop this in the chat people might have seen this before i've retweeted a bunch of these but this is uh my key to the city this week goes to uh the twitter user that little demon it's a great account fantastic account that um takes like different screenshots from different old video games and just slightly edits like just the captions to like using the same fonts and everything that the video games used or you know just adding that little bit of like like you look at it and you're like this isn't in the game is it right you know but it looks like it could but it looks like it could be so i i got a couple good examples uh here's super mario rpg And uh, the caption is, they will tell you the Mushroom Kingdom just needs to be reformed, Mario, dot, dot, dot. But some institutions need to be abolished. And it looks like one of the uh, dialogue boxes. Yeah, yeah. Toad Town. Yeah. And it's just like weird social criticism. I don't know what this game is. Might be like Uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbor or something. Yeah, Zombies Ate My Neighbor. And like there's a picture of the zombie dude and it just says health care, please. Instead of like game over to the game over screen. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, I, I don't know most of these games, but, uh, space dude giving a thumbs up and it says back to normal, but normal actually fucking sucked. Mm-hmm. Um, here's another caption. Don't know the game. Another sort of 16 bit old school game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says everyone is mad at you. Nobody, nobody wants you talking about how much quote theory you read this summer. They just want to drink and have you shut the fuck up. <laughs> and that's Thanks. White Boy Summer. Yeah. And then this last one. Uh, some weird, like, blocky looking uh, 3D rendering of a game that's like a 2021 strategic planning. Uh, and the only thing on the list is make something worse than social media. 
So it's uh, at that little demon on Twitter. I like that. I like that, too. Good shit. So before we get to our listener voicemails, uh, Donovan, if you can plug everything you got, any of your GoFundMe, YouTube, Twitter, anything you want to throw out there. Yeah, so if you guys go over to BadDragon.com Ooh, okay. um, and order just literally anything from that website, uh, all the proceeds go to uh, starving children in Zimbabwe. It's incredible. Uh, so the more money you spend, uh, there is no promo code. Uh, it's just all for the betterment of humankind. Everybody has to order and own a dragon dildo. Um, and my Twitter is at OJ Simpson. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and just send me a lot of positive feedback. Oh, that, that was you, Donovan. The he- Hello, world of Twitter or whatever it was. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, that's me. That's yeah. me. Okay. It's, now, it's now, now that you mentioned it, I do. Yeah, I can hear the voice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a character that I've been working on for quite some time. Okay. I, uh, but I, I think it's coming together pretty well. Uh, I would say so. You, thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, I've been putting a lot of work and effort on, under that Twitter account. Uh, and yeah, no, uh, I have my my stuff with my mom. Um, you can find that uh, on Pornhub. That gets weird. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, it gets mixed up with all the other mom videos in there so just take your time uh or you could just look me up on youtube at a crip in the cradle uh young crip tv and there's a playlist for all the good shit we have a backlog of uh episodes coming out soon hell yeah uh yeah be on the lookout for uh just my comedy shit that i'm picking up on we're already looking at buses so Hell it's, yeah, just a, it's just it's the, just the detail shit now, like getting the renovation stuff and then fucking getting used to driving and whatnot. I mean, that's going to be fun as hell, because I mean, like you said, you're not too far from us. So next time you're yeah. doing a show, hopefully once everything kind of, you know, fingers crossed, does start to clear up. We'll we'll be there. We'll see you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fuck yeah. So, yeah, you know, follow with Donovan on Twitter and uh, be there when it happens. Yeah, it's a good time. So moving along, though, to our listener voicemails, uh, some calls from our wonderful listeners. Um, give us a call of your own if you'd like to. 312-788-7361. Or you can always send us an audio file to thoughtcopspodcast at gmail.com. Hit it. This is the Discord News for this week bringing you all the news worth reporting from the virtual streets of Neo-Chicago. Members of the server have been celebrating the sentencing of Derek Chauvin. As a news program, we don't want to get too political, but fuck that guy. <laughs> After 688 Attack Sub posted a picture detailing how to make a superior Molotov, a few users began a mass gulp reply, which consisted of replying with the gulp emoji and then tagging the gulp emoji three times as reactions. This was ruined by one person. Agent IO has been posting screenshots of his completion times of Hitman 3 levels. No one actually knows what they mean, but we're happy for him anyways. In hashtag Neo Chicago, everyone made fun of Mayor Lori Lightfoot's fashion choices, (laughs) which makes her look like a child dressed up as a detective. It was Sleep Science birthday this week. Happy birthday, Sleep Science. Maybe you'll finally grow up this year. (laughs) In hashtag outrage, a discussion about pit bulls started Thursday night and went well into Friday morning. (laughs) The discussion involved statistics, anecdotes, and sleep science paragraphs. And now to our final segment of the show, Sports Update. Season 16 of Blaseball ended with a come-from-behind win for the Dallas Stakes. Trailing 2-1 to the Chicago Firefighters, (laughs) they managed to (laughs) score 10 runs in a Sun 2 weather, giving them a win, and then going on to win the game, giving them their third win for the championship. Chorby Soul, who was incinerated (laughs) late into Season 16, was resurrected in the elections, only to be incinerated in the first game of Season 17. This week's Discord news has been presented to you by the man who doesn't care and Agent IO. I still, I have no idea what Splorts is. That's I have my, no idea. My favorite David <laughs> Bowie song, The Man Who Doesn't Care. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I, I still don't know what Splorts is either. I'm like, I just, you know, I'm, hap- point, I'm happy I... for you, man. It sounds like you won. <laughs> 
uh there's there's so much good other stuff that was in that voicemail and i i can't remember any of it i just remember the S- chicago firefighters sports ball facts yeah <laughs> hey doc Ops, this is flying the garbage main uh i got two minutes to hate i'm not gonna let it run long but basically in i think 2017 not long after i first started rapping i got in touch with a producer from toronto to do a song uh, this producer had her music attached to a distribution service uh, for licensing at a Portland. And uh, the song that we did got picked up for the MTV show The Challenge. Champ oh, no versus shit. Versus Stars. Uh, for season three, episode six, uh, there's like a scene where they're, it's like kind of like a show, like a reality. It's, it's, mixed, it's like a big brother mixed with a uh, fucking... Wipeout. Anyway, long story short, my my song got used in this show. Uh, I was told I was going to be able to get annual lump sum off of it, and I have yet to see a penny. Uh, it took two years of asking, calling, emails into the publishing company, SoCan, uh, the artist I worked with, and it was a lot of, I'll get back to you. I'm not sure. And it just got added to a streaming service in Canada, so I'm assuming it's on HBO Max or something now. But yeah, I'm fucking pissed. I never got anything off of that. Have a good night, guys. Dude, what the fuck? I man. didn't know about that. I mean, like, congrats on the get, but like, I mean, that sucks, man. They're just paying you an exposure, basically. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's we'll, what we'll... That is. God, that sucks. But I mean, it sucks, but it's cool. I'm so conflicted. Well, it's it's cool that it happened and it's cool that you can say that it happened and complain about the fact that you got no payout but it's bad in the sense that you got no payout especially with the streaming shit i mean i know it's weird yeah like streaming isn't paying as much as like things used to in the past and whatnot so you wouldn't be making a killing off of it but you'd be making something off of it i mean that's fucking ridiculous the challenge he said it was yeah Never. Yeah, like I, I am under the mindset of uh, if it seems too good to be true, it definitely is. Uh, and a situation like that is really fucking cool. And the entire time, the back of my brain would be screaming, mm, mm. Mm, something, something's yeah. going to go bad here. Yeah, I, I get that for sure. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I'm not saying this is your fault, but at the same time, <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> Uh, it's it like started i think is like the real world road rules challenge and then i think that they just like turned it into a its own thing or i i don't know all right but i think that's how it started so yeah that's fucking that sounds funny that at least people are hearing it i guess i'll try and look on some positive side but i mean i also understand if i wasn't if i was promised money and i didn't get money i i would be ruining people's lives yeah, yeah I, I would want that money. Especially yeah. when it's like MTV. Give me my fucking money, MTV. Right? Yeah, you're, you're willing to give like all these fucking nobodies a movie award, but you're not going to give me my honest pay. Come on now. It is Friday evening, Thought Cops. You've done a wonderful job so far, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. Ian you'll be incredible calling in once again to your amazing broadcast. And this time, I have nothing but compliments for Kevin. What Kevin, the fuck? what a wonderful Twitch stream you carried out the other oh, thank night. Thank you. It was an absolutely astounding feat to watch you slay pogo men with Ness and his trusty baseball bat. The way you cleared out the dogs from the map, obtained the map from the library. I was captivated, absolutely enthralled with the adventure. I was taking you notes when I was playing on what all the characters' names were. were to watch. I can only say so many good things, Kevin. I look forward to when there are no more enemies. There's no more XP to gain, no more weapons to obtain. The bestiary is full. Although I'm not very familiar with Earthbound. Does it have a bestiary? I'm not certain, but I know that you would complete it 100%, Kevin. And for that, you have my everlasting thanks that you spilled so much blood on the digital platform. I salute you, sir. And I salute... All the fallen who made you so great. Now, Grant. What? Grant. <laughs> Grant. What? Yes, you. Don't roll your yeah, eyes. I'm not. I'm on camera. I'm not, I'm not doing job. it. An absolute fantastic job. And don't let him off the hook, Kevin. 
Make sure he told you you did a good job. You and absolutely said did. so. Gentlemen, have a great evening. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm waiting. Thanks. Wait, I tell you you did a good job? Yes. Yep. Sure, you did a great job. I was laying in bed all day with tonsillitis, but uh, I didn't I didn't get to watch the stream, but I'll go ahead and assume that you did a great job. Uh, well, I want to say like that game, I forgot how hard it is in the beginning because like he makes it sound like I was kicking ass, but like I was like I died like 15 times in the first like 30 minutes. I was like, oh, man, like you just have to like grind for a while. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the rest of the game just kind of falls into place. Uh-huh. But um tend to forget that stuff i also you know we've been misattributing this accent and i didn't realize this until a twitter um a twitter conversation leo and i had earlier in the day but uh we keep calling leo fraser and leo's not fraser leo is calculon oh my god Futurama. <laughs> he's calculon <laughs> you're right you're right I keep making tossed salad and scrambled eggs jokes. I need to be rewatching Futurama so I can remember lines that Calculon said. They do kind of sound similar. Like what's that? What's that? Uh, I know it, you mentioned it's it like before, the, the, mid, accent. the mid Atlantic. Yes. Yes. Or the transatlantic it. accent. Yeah. So I'm like, that's like an actor's thing from like, yeah, the olden days. And so. he just posted a photo of Calculon. He, he knows. He knows exactly who he sounds like. Hey, fuck off. It's Dilbert Jack. My two minutes of hate goes to the university for, uh, so I had an unused food credit. Let me of turn like down Dragon Quest in the background. I can hear it. Because they kicked us off music. campus last year because of COVID. And it expires at the end of this current semester. So I had a whole year once school got, like a whole two semesters once school got back on campus to use it or I lose it permanently. I wasn't informed of this until last week. So now I have to buy, use up $600 worth of food and feel like a total fat ass because the university is incompetent on informing students about anything. Jesus. Later. Yeah, they want to pocket your money. I feel like that's yeah. not too hard, like 600 bucks. Just like... So you can spend that pretty easily. If you can, just buy a bunch of non-perishable shit. True. Like, just buy, like, a billion bottles of Coke. Like, don't... E- like, what What else are you going to do? What just, more do you need? Yeah, just, like, Siri, like, what else are you going to... If you have to spend it on something, buy it. Buy something that will last the rest of your life. Like, I, I don't know. That's what I'd do. So, the the thing with this person is that they're in college and they have lunch money essentially like yeah i think six hundred dollars credited to an account that they say hey you can't cash this out you just have to spend it within the next like however long you said i mean and i and i'm supposed to feel bad right (laughs) that's what i'm gonna say you can can feel how you want to feel i'm I'm saying my game plan would be was that the point (laughs) well he's like they didn't they they could have told him sooner hate like they could have told him sooner because now he ha- like he has like what he has what school goes out like a week or two and he's got to spend all this money yeah. when it's like he could have been like he's probably been like spending his own money that he didn't have to spend all all year right. because of you know the money that's allotted to his account so you know there are worse problems you, in you life to them, have but yeah you could just give me the money if that's a, an issue like I'll take it off your hand I'll spend six hundred dollars on food. No, but you can, you, you can only do it at his campus. So I'm assuming I'll, that, I'll eat at your campus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know where you go, but I'll figure it out. Donovan, get that bus, do a college tour, really? uh, go to his college and get paid in hoagies from the, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the $600 the worth of hoagies. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Hey, fellas. So hey. now that the feds are aware of the Minecraft defense and oh, just are right. ignoring our freedoms. Oh, yeah. Um, shit. What, what's next? Uh, what's, do we just say in Roblox or do we just make it like a now and verb? Like, I'm going to Minecraft Nancy Pelosi's Minecraft. I've been using that until already like that. She is dripping Minecraft all over her Minecraft. Like, Ugh. help me, help me out here. I, I meant to bring this up in the episode, so thank you for calling in and reminding us. So there, I, I don't know what this excerpt is from, 
Um, but it looks to be from some very important document. Right. Uh, it says, uh, there's a little anecdote here. It says, Minecraft is a video game based on information provided by the FBI. The government understands that it is common for persons discussing criminal activity online to refer to such activity as occurring in Minecraft to conceal the true nature of the activity. Jokes? You morons? So, yeah, I mean, that's like the whole joke. And then the FBI is like, hey, just in case, you know, just in case they're not kidding that the Minecraft defense is not actually going to hold up in a court of law, which, of course, does. You made a whole video. I was going to say, uh, go to our YouTube page, uh, Thought Cops Reeducationing. There is an in Minecraft video where I detail all of this information and more. And the FBI obviously watched that. They were one of the 300 people who did, you know, 300 views. Whoa. And they said, we cannot have this. You know, this is, this is dangerous. And this man is spreading a uh, hateful gospel of uh, crime and villainy. So, you know, she, she posits the question, what's next? What, like, yeah whatever video game it doesn't matter roblox yeah, sure yeah. i don't know what that is fine i donovan do you know what roblox is uh yeah yeah i i'm trying to piece together the what is fucking happening <laughs> so do, do you know the minecraft thing like if you say like you're you want to like uh hunt someone down or right. whatever kill them you i'm say, going to blank the list name of politician quote in minecraft and the whole joke right. is like if you say like in minecraft at the end of it it means like oh well, i'm like you could do anything in minecraft and i was talking about a video game wink wink and that was right. this whole meme this uh we, we even have a t-shirt of it in our store um yeah. of a guy whose uh guts are being splattered out with a shirt that says in minecraft on it and uh like apparently that. yeah apparently the fbi caught on to that and they were like yeah you um just in case that is not a joke by the way um we're gonna get you that's so, hilarious so i, like I, I is, is roblox similar to minecraft i am it's got blocks in it i have no idea what it is uh i mean it's similar ish enough uh i i know some autistic friends of mine that really love it a lot um okay sounds about right like the same kind of you right know, it's it's wheelhouse. literally the same demographic of people um so it makes sense if you were gonna transition that to, it's just gonna relocate you're not getting rid yeah. of it no, I, I, I just want to make sure because it does sound like right. that will continue to hold up in a court of law if you just well, simply sure. have to, yeah, change. The- yeah, we just dance around in the same way that the Pirate Bay every now and then has to change. It's like, uh, it's like right. uh, URL. It's like, yeah, oh, it's we're the URL, Pirate Bay yeah. 3 now, you know, or whatever like, We're is. the Pirate Bay dot uh, X2L7V. Yeah. yeah. We're not the other one that has the yeah, same not, logo. Not the dot com one. The one that's uh Pirate Bay dot Switzerland. Yes. Dot gov. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that uh it it makes sense that it would move over to, to Roblox though. Cause like I said, just a same thing. Okay, that's fair enough. Well, I, I think that does answer our caller's question. Meeting so, adjourned. I yeah. wish we had a gavel. I guess that's not really appropriate for cops, but we are the judge, jury, and executioner. Whatever. So, like, what? Like, just uh, bang the gun on the table. <laughs> wow, yeah. that, I'm sure that sounded awful. I'm sure Zwick is gonna fucking <laughs> kill me for that. In Minecraft. I like that. Whatever. Um, kill him so- back. Uh, that about does it for the voicemails uh, Donovan thanks so much for coming back on the show man no thank you guys for having me I appreciate you coming on always a pleasure um, hope to see you out in the road yeah, out and about great. hopefully in the near future um, anybody who wants to leave a voicemail of their own give us a call 312-788-7361 or you can always send us an audio file to thoughtcopspodcast at gmail.com if you want to support the show, throw us a few bucks over at patreon.com slash thought cops. we got all kinds of great bonus content and videos and extra episodes on there. And you can hang out in the live chat with us and watch us on video, hanging out in the room with the Oprah in the background behind us. Yeah, there she is. She looks stunning. She looks incredible. Yeah. She's glowing. <laughs> Wood. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time. See you, Space Cop. In Minecraft, everything is fine. In 
Minecraft Everything is fine in Minecraft Everything is fine You've got your good thing And I've got mine In Minecraft Everything is fine In Minecraft Everything is fine In Minecraft Everything is fine You've got your good thing And I've got mine In Minecraft everything